In today's video, we are going to dive deeper into one stock that I have mentioned on this channel a number of times, but I've only mentioned brief things here and there about it. Whereas today's video, we are going to dive in a lot deeper. Why are we talking about this stock? Well, because I think that this one has a lot of future growth potential. There is also one very rich, very famous investor that has taken a keen interest into this company. And you guys seem to be interested in this one as well. And also I am interested in potentially adding this company to my own portfolio in the future. So why not do a deeper dive in today's video? I'm going to split this video into a few different sections and I'll make sure to use timestamps so you can clearly jump around should you want to. But remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. I am not a qualified financial advisor and please, please, please do your own research before making any investment decisions. If you don't know where to even begin when it comes to researching stocks, I've made an entire workshop that is a complete blueprint for this. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. So without further ado, the stock that we are looking at today is New Holdings. This is a fintech stock that is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. However, it is headquartered in Brazil. I have noticed that more and more people are getting interested in this position and I would say that a community is starting to form, but nowhere near as much as the likes of Tesla or Palantir at the moment, or a fintech company like PayPal and SoFi. I think for the majority of people, they've never even heard about this company. And to be honest, I think this one has started to pop up on people's radars. People have started investing into it because of Warren Buffett, the legend himself. His company started to actually make a position into this stock before and during its IPO in 2021. I can't find evidence of Warren Buffett buying this company since Q4 2021, but it seems like their average buy price is around the $9.82 mark. This Latin fintech company is easily one of the fastest growing fintech companies in the entire world right now. And we'll look at the financials and all the numbers associated to this in just a bit. You might not have ever heard of this company before, but New Holding is actually the holding company for New Bank, which is one of the world's largest digital financial services platforms. And it actually serves around 94 million customers across Brazil, Mexico and Colombia. Colombia and Mexico actually be in new markets for New Bank. They only got their applications approved very recently. As far as what New Bank have to offer customers, well, many, many things. They kind of have this ecosystem in place. They offer savings accounts, credit cards, life insurance, loans, investing products. And this picture on the screen now is actually from 2021. So ignore the numbers, but it does give you an idea of their ecosystem. And they are what is called a Neo Bank, which is just a fintech company that offers their services through apps and online platforms. So they don't have any physical stores. And this is obviously good because it means that they don't have as many outgoings. They don't have as many expenses because they're not having to build nor maintain nor staff physical shops. And this is a competitive advantage when we're comparing New Bank to some of the more traditional establishments. But of course, there are many, many banks that are neo banks and that are operating purely online. So what else is interesting about this stock? Well, I think the most interesting thing and the reason why there is so much growth potential is because of the markets that they operate in. So they are not only serving a growing population, but they are serving an increasing youth population in Latin America. And Latin America is actually quite an interesting place right now because it is becoming more connected and more digitized than ever before. The reason why this market is so interesting is because their SAM, their serviceable addressable market and their TAM, their total addressable market, are really, really large and relatively untapped right now. So when you pair this with the fact that the population of youth is growing and that the region is rapidly um, adopting the internet, adopting technology, this all means that the demand for the services and type of business that Newbank are is just incredibly large. And this image here just shows you that a lot of the Latin American population right now is unbanked, meaning they don't have a bank at all. But I actually saw from other data that these numbers are maybe even higher than what we think. But either way, you know, the unbanked population of Latin America is much, 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 much higher than that of Europe, the US, New Zealand, and other countries like that. But we have also seen the data that shows that the unbanked population of Brazil is declining, which is really good because we know that New Bank have uh, established an existence in the Brazilian market, which actually means that we can now prove that, de the, that the demand exists for New Bank. And this gives me optimism. Because to me, this signals that when they go to expand into other new markets, which they are already doing, and you know, I think we'll only see them expand even more, 
we know that we will probably see a similar demand. Of course, it's not guaranteed, but it does seem like that will be the case. And right now they are in quite a unique position in the sense that they don't really have that much competition. Many of us here in the UK and the US and other like markets probably take it for granted that we can literally log on to our phone and have our bank at hand, you know, a mobile friendly app powered banking experience. But that is not commonplace in Latin America. And of course, we have a lot of choice. We can decide to go with Monzo. We can decide to go with Revolut here in Europe or chase in America, whatever the options are, there's a lot of choice. But as far as I understand it, that's not really the case in Latin America. Most of the traditional banks don't offer an app, Don't they're not really technology driven companies, they have some physical stores, that's the population that are banked, because remember, the majority of the population is actually unbanked. But those banks that do provide mobile services, as far as I can see from customer surveys and data online, the experience is typically very, very poor. And of course, we have new bank that have a perfect solution for that. And we also know that their offerings, new banks offerings are absolutely loved. There is really, really strong customer loyalty and it's not only the largest and most popular, but also the only mobile banking provider in these regions. It actually serves half half of the Brazilian adult population. And the customer growth that we're seeing from new bank just goes to show how much the people of Latin America love this. Remember as well, because new bank don't have physical stores like the traditional banking system, they are able to bring down their running costs, which then mean they can pass these cost savings on to the customer, meaning the customer's banking experience gets vastly cheaper, which wasn't the case before in these markets. Before new bank established themselves in Brazil and now, you know, some other Latin American countries, a few banks a few traditional banks used to dominate the market and they used to charge excessive fees. And this just means that, like I said before, the competition is not really there. It's kind of a no brainer for customers. And also, unfortunately, when I've been researching New Bank, I've read a lot that the financial services providers that have existed before in Latin America have historically provided poor customer service. Whereas New Bank get way less average number of complaints per 1 million customers, and they are also winning awards. So right now, like I said, they serve 94 million customers, but this number is growing rapidly and I don't think it will be very long before it hits 100 million. So just to put this into context, you probably have heard about SoFi. Very, 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 very popular fintech stock. And for good reason. You know, I think this is a fantastic company and we've mentioned SoFi on this channel a number of times. Right now, SoFi have 7.5 million members as of Q4 2023. And I've just said that new banks service 94 million customers. So you can kind of see the scale of the markets that they're working with. So not only are they growing their customers in their existing markets that they serve, but they're also looking to expand, for example, into new markets like Chile and Mexico, where a lot of that population, almost half, I believe, are unbanked as well. Let's now think about the financials. Their revenue on a quarter by quarter basis and on a yearly basis has been steadily and consistently growing. Their net income has been positive since Q1 2023 and it's increased in the quarter since. So profitability has been on the rise. It's also worth pointing out that on average, each active customer uses four different new bank products, which is really, really bullish. And this indicates that once a new user opens an account with them, there is a high, high likelihood of cross-selling additional products offered by the company. And this then means that they are able to increase their ARPAC, which stands for Average Revenue Per Active Customer. So you can see here that their model is based on the active customers, which is rapidly growing, multiplied by the revenue per customer, which is also growing, minus the cost to serve these customers, which has been virtually unchanged for a while and sits at around the 90 cents mark, which is very, very low. And this means, therefore, they have a substantial earning power. With any investment, of course, comes risk. So when we think about new holdings, what are some of the most obvious risks here? Well, I think it would be things like regulatory changes, political issues, and the economic landscape changing. But definitely, definitely, definitely do your own further research and be fully aware of all the risks involved before you invest into any stock. So let's just take a look at what Seeking Alpha has to show us about this company. And if you wanna try this platform for your own stock research, I do have a seven day free trial link that I will leave in the description below. But anyway, what we can see here is that there is a strong buy, a buy and a hold rating on this stock currently. 
And let's just have a look at the growth section here. Revenue growth year over year coming up as an A+, plus, uh, 101.52%, which is phenomenal. Revenue growth forward looking and A plus as well. Again, extremely, extremely good. We can have a look at profitability. So the overall profitability grade that Seeking Alpha are giving this company is a B minus. Very, very good. Gross profit margin coming out as an A. Net income margin a B. You can see some other figures here, but all in all, this is very, very strong and does stand out as a potentially good opportunity. You can dive a little bit deeper. You know, you can look at the financials, you can look at the summary, it'll tell you everything you need to know. One thing I love about Seeking Alpha, and this is pretty much what sold me on it, is the analysis section. So you can read loads of different anal um, analysts' take on this company. Really, really detailed, really detailed articles you can see here. You could get really stuck in this for a long old time. But I just wanna take a look to see how it has been performing compared to the S&P 500. So you can see that right now, it's a weekend, so the market's not open, but this stock is going for $11.29 per share. But let's see what's been happening over time and we'll compare it to the S&P 500 index. So we'll start with year to date. New Holdings has returned investors 35.53%, way outperforming the index, but of course that's quite a short time period to look at. So now let's expand to a one year, 155.43%, again, outperforming the index significantly, which in a one year period has also done very, very well. Zooming out to a three year period, this is kind of the max that we can look at because like I said, they only went public in 2021. So not loads and loads of data here. And we get quite a different picture. Typically what happens, and I say this in a lot of videos, when a company has an IPO or a DPO, you typically, not always, see a big spike in the stock price and then that comes down and it could take, you know, up to a few months, maybe up to even quite a few years for that to recover and then increase. But underperforming the index over a three year time period or since 2021, but still doing pretty well, you know, definitely being quite volatile here. You've just got to ask yourself after your own research, do you think that there is a lot of growth potential for this company? And of course, it's still very, very early days. I forgot to mention as well, actually, that they recently announced a partnership with Wise to enter the travel segment and they launched the global account for high income customers. Very, very interesting partnership indeed. And we'll have to see if they make more as time goes on. So with all that said, do let me know what you think about this stock in the comments below. Does it currently have a place in your portfolio or maybe is it on the watch list to add in the future? And how do you think this one stacks up compared to other fintech companies like PayPal, SoFi, Robinhood, the list goes on. Until next time, keep investing, keep analyzing and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.